Entity Framework Core allows for a one-to-many relationship. Hit the subscribe button as we write a link query using the include method. Get started with EF Core as we continue with part five. This is our product entity. We added the product entity as a DB set in our DB context. What we're going to do is we're going to add a category entity. I'm going to ensure that one category has many products. So in the efcore.domain project, we go into entities, add a new item. We're going to select class and call it category. We'll mark it as public and remove the using statements. We go back into the product entity. We're going to copy the ID and the name and paste it into the category entity. Now we're going to set up some relationships in the product entity. So we're going to have a nullable integer of category ID. And then we're going to have the relationship to the category entity as well. So it's a type of category and we're going to name it category. Next, we need to add an entity type configuration for the category entity. We go back into the product configuration. This configures all the properties for the product table. We're going to do the same for category. So we're going to create a new item. I'm going to call it category configuration. We'll mark it as public and remove the using statements. We have a look in the product configuration class. We can see it implements the I entity type configuration, passing in the product entity as a generic type. We need to copy and paste that, and we need to change the entity to category. We now need to implement the configure interface, and this is where we can add our configuration. So we're going to set the table name. We're going to call it category with a schema of shop. We're also going to set the name to it and we're going to have a max length of 200 characters, but we're going to make it optional. And because we haven't got any category records, we can add seed data. Seed data allows you to add default data when running the migration. So we call builder.hasData and then we can define our categories. So we create a category with an ID of one and we're going to call the category machines. And we create another category with an ID of two and we're going to name it accessories. And that's set up for us. Next, we need to add a migration for our category entity. After that, we need to update it against the SQL Server database. So we go into Tools, New Get Package Manager, and Package Manage Console. Ensure that the default project is set as round the code.efcore.infrastructure. I'm going to add the migration by calling add hyphen migration. And I'm going to call the migration add category. That's added our migration. So it's added a new column into the product table for category ID. It's then created our category table as part of the migration. So it's got the ID there and the name. It's set the schema as shop and the name of the table as category. It's then got our seed data. So it's going to add in machines and accessories with an ID of one and two respectively. And then it's creating the indexes and the relationships between the product and the category. In order to update the database, we just call update hyphen database. Let's go into our SQL Server database. So we go to view SQL Server object explorer. We open up our local DB, go to database, run the code, EF core, go into tables. We can now see that we've got a category table. We can see it's got our records in there of machines and accessories. If we go back into the product and go to view data, we can now see that we've got a category ID column in the product table. Now we want to add a category ID property when inserting and updating a product entity to the database. So in the roundcode.efcore application project, we go into the models insert update product, and I'm going to add an optional category ID with a type of integer. Next, we go into the product service and we need to make a modification to the insert async method. We're passing in a type of insert update product. So that's the property where we just added the category ID. We need to add it to the product entity. So we call insert product and the category ID property. 
We also need to do the same for the update async. So we're passing in once again an insert update product type as part of the parameter, and we'll pass it into the entity. Let's update some of our products. So we're going to do it for an ID of two. Now ID of two was a computer which had a description of my computer. It was priced at 500 and we're going to set the category ID to one. We've executed that and we've got a 204 response. We're going to do it for one more. So of an ID of four, that was the keyboard. And the description was my keyboard. The price was 20. I'm going to set the category ID as two. And that has also returned a 204 response. Let's just verify that our records have been updated. So we go view SQL Server Object Explorer. We open up the product table. The computer now has a category ID of one and the keyboard has a category ID of two. We now want to return the category name when querying a product. So in the roundthecode.efcore.application project, we go into the get product model. We're going to add an optional property, which we're going to name as category name. We then go into the product service and we'll notice that we've got a couple of get async methods that we need to modify. Start off with the get async. So we find the products DB set as part of the DB context query. We're going to call the include function and we're going to include the category entity. We then need to return it as part of the response. So we'll add the category name that we just added, and we're going to call product.category with a question mark because it might be nullable, and the name. We need to do the same for the get all async method as well. So as part of the DB context, we call the include function and include the category entity. And then we can return the category name as part of the response, but we need to do a null reference check for this. So if it's not null, then we return the category name. Otherwise, we just return now. And we can do the same for the other get all async method that we've got. And up here, we've got the query. We need to also add the include and add the category entity. Let's do a single check. So we're going to pass in the ID of two. We've got the category name of machines. We'll do it for one where the category doesn't exist. That's returning the category name of null. If we now return all the products, the category name is being returned for products where there is a category and being returned as null if there's not a category. Watch the next part to continue learning about Entity Framework Core. And if you want to watch any video in our Get Started with EF Core course, check out the playlist at roundthecode.com slash EF course. There is also a link for it in the YouTube video description.